Susie, over to you. Hi, hello. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my East London kitchen studio, temporary studio, um, for our star, Starry Night workshop. And um, before I start, I'd like to say that there's a lot going on in the, in the stars at the moment. Um, it's a great time for stargazing with long, dark nights and clear, frosty skies. Um, even though in London it's not terribly clear at the moment, certainly not tonight, I've seen some great things from our window, Mars and Jupiter and, and so on. And coming up, I think actually at the moment, there's a, a meteor shower called the Geminids, uh, coming from the constellation of Gemini. And there's also a near conjunction of two huge planets, um, Jupiter and Saturn. That's coming up, I think, on the 21st of December. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is show you a few of my starry pictures to give you an idea of my work and what I've been doing and what we might um, do together. And then I'll talk about the materials that I'm using, the, how to make the card and so on, um, or the Christmas present. And then we'll get stuck into some painting um, in different mediums. So these, um, if, yeah, these are some of my acrylics on paper. We'll be using um, fairly thick paper, 200 GSM, meaning grams per square meter. It's quite thick for making a card. And these are all that weight of paper. And these, this one is acrylic um, colors, obviously, on paper. And this one, more monochrome, because I quite like mixing up the mediums, is a charcoal background with an ink um, tree and a sort of wash of, of ink there. Um, so these, these are both obviously of the moon. Um, the moon, which is, let me see, it is waning. That's right, because when the light, the illuminated part of the moon is on the left, it's waning. And I made a little diagram here so that um, we know what we're doing. So there's the new moon. You can hardly see the moon. And then it's going round. It's waxing where the illuminated part is on the right. And then it's waning. A little bit of science there. Um, and I also wanted to say that there's a great app called Star Walk on your phone if you want to get it, which tells you what's going on in the skies at any particular time, any particular day. Anyway, just to give you some more examples of work, that's um, an electric storm at night. And one of the good things I find about working in these, in these um, conditions is that it, it's very simplified. You get these silhouettes um, obviously through the, the dark shapes against the night sky. So electric storm with lightning, another moon, um, a mass of stars, um, this is in case anyone has some spare cardboard which we had through having a lot of deliveries during lockdown so I used delivery boxes as a um, ground for painting on. Um, this is to change the scale of the moon a bit, to make it big and um, silhouetting the, the tree. That's just from my window here in London. Um, this one is an early evening study, just with a few stars coming out and a pale grey sky. Um, I was going to show you some different um, tones of grey for the paper, or tones of blue so that we can do something early evening and then later on in the night. So continuing just quickly, this is um, of a comet. I've never seen one, but you can make it up or do, um, do it from photos. Um, these are shooting stars, meteors, like the Geminids that I was talking about. I think this was the Perseids in August um, from the constellation of Perseus. 
Then I thought possibly you might want to include buildings if you're in an urban area. You don't want it too raw, perhaps. <clears throat> so you can get a quite nice contrast between the lights from lots of flats here in London, for example, and the night sky. And although London's fairly polluted, you can sometimes, as I've said, see some great stars. Finally, I thought we might have time to put figures in. Um, here are some figures in moonlight with shadows. So that is a few ideas. And I think now we can get started. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about the paper and how to make the card. This is A3 paper and I've just folded it. And you can either use that as quite a big card or if you want, you can tear it and you don't need scissors. You just fold it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. I've done it a few times to save time. Make a little tear at the top and then stand up and then, I hope I don't mess this up, tear it down like that. And then just fold it over. This you could send noise with by post. It's a smaller card. And just paint on one side or even on both sides. Um, and you may need to press it under a book or something to flatten it once you've done the painting. So, um, first of all, I'm going to put on a ground on this paper here, flat color. And I've got um, fairly simple colors. Again, simplicity is the key. It's often the key to my own work. And with night painting, it is all fairly simple with the silhouette shapes, as I said. And I've just got some white, some Payne's gray, some black, and I've got some ink and some charcoal and pastels because you might want to vary the mediums. I, I haven't got that many colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up and I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put on a flat dark ground. So Susie, what, what is that there? Is that, um, is that watered down paint? Oh, that is right. Yes, it's Payne's Grey watered down. Um, I've got a jug of water as well, but this is um, a more liquid uh, kind of paint. And then I've got my kitchen roll, my signature material, which <laughs> is very useful for making a flat surface. Or flat-ish. And then I might go for this um, portrait format. I might turn it round to do landscape. It's up to you. Um, and you can even put on more paint if you want it darker. But I'm going to leave it like this for now. And then I'm going to do some with my thicker paint, maybe with black actually, because I want to contrast with the um, with the paint spray. I'm going to do some trees against the against the um, the sky. Conifers. So Susie, do you often work from your imagination or do you paint do. you see? I do, but, uh, but when when we were in France in the summer, in, in the countryside, there were such great dark skies um, that I did life drawing at night. Well, life drawing, I drew at night and, um, you know, made a mental note of how the trees were at night. Then, this is the fun bit. You can do maybe a moon here. Yeah? I use my finger as well as other things. Um, as well as brushes. And then um, with a smaller brush, I'm going to make a shape on the moon because it's not a, you can have a full moon if you want, or you can have a certain 
degree of, of the moon's, um, of the luminosity of the moon. So this is a waxing moon, right? And then a thing we saw in France, which was really nice, was we saw the planet Mars. This is from my imagination, although I did see Mars in London the other night um, from our window. So and Mars was just about there. And we call it the red planet, but it was actually an apricot color. Um, Mars is, what is he, about half the size of Earth or maybe less. And now this is the fun bit. You can get a point with a pencil or the end of a brush and you can make your stars. And if you want to be accurate, of course, you can go on the app that I mentioned, Star Walk, and um, get something more specific. But this is without any reference. I'm just doing it fairly arbitrarily. And even um, you could, before you put in the trees, you could get um, a liquid solution of um, white paint, which I've got here, and you could just throw some, sprinkle some white paint on the, um, on the dark background. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to do that now. I'm not going to do it in front of the computer, so I might get mess on the computer, but... We've got a question, Susie, um, just about how you painted the moon, um, because yeah. you worked very quickly. Um, yeah. so maybe if you're able to just kind of show almost on another piece of paper just how you created the moon. Sure. Okay. I'm just going to move my sprinkling of stars. So, the moon, um, the moon I did with my, my, Forefinger, I think. Um, you could, of course, do it with a brush or a pastel, but I find it quite convenient to do it like that to get a circle. And you can go round and round as big as you want. And then, although I didn't do it um, before, you can actually blot it to show the tone on the moon if you want. These seas, as they're called, of, of lava. Um, so it's just a very simple process of some white and then you can um, blot it with some kitchen towel and it gives the illusion of the, um, of the seas on the moon. Um, but you asked me how I did the other moon. Um, it was, I got all this one I did earlier, paper. <laughs> um, uh, I did, I did yeah. the moon. What? You're so prepared. <laughs> yes, I did the moon like this, and then I um, got some dark Payne's grey or something, or maybe black, and I made um, a shape of dark on the moon to show it at a particular stage in its, in its journey. Um, in this case, its journey towards the full moon. I think this is the first, no, it's not the first quarter, it's I don't know what it's called. You can often see the dark section of the moon. Is that okay? Great. I'm just going to try something here because we've got Louis and we've got Murphy that are, are making work at the same time. So I'm going to see, hopefully people could maybe, if you go to gallery view, people might be able to see the work that um, Louis's done. Might just see if I can spotlight Louis. So that's... So this is the one I've been doing along, alongside you, Susie. That's nice. I love your big moon. I'm a bit... I'm a bit um, uh, what's is that? Um, Russo. Henri Russo. Big moon. Lovely. <laughs> um, maybe Murphy, if I spotlight you, you can show us. Oh, they're beautiful. Oh. <laughs> they're lovely. Fabulous. Great. Great. Really. Um, so I hope that going back to how I did the moon helps. It, this actually isn't showing up as dark as it ought to. So um, 
I'm, I'm just going to put a, put, put a bit more dark on there because the moon isn't very, um, whoops, isn't terribly visible. That dark bit of it isn't terribly visible, it is a little bit visible. And then I'm going to put Mars back, my favourite. And then the other thing I saw, we saw, was a great um, a manifestation of Jupiter. Uh, I can't remember where it was, but I'll put Jupiter here. And Jupiter is the biggest of the eight planets. And I only learned recently that it's almost all gas. It's a gas giant, as is Saturn and the brightest planet in the sky. So it's great to be able to see that big bright light and, and you know it's Jupiter. And now, away from the computer, I'm gonna chuck some, some white paint on this to suggest some stars, right? You get them at a nice distance from each other. What did you do there, Susie, off camera? You just sort of splattered. I've got a white saloon. I've got a, just some white paint and water. So it's quite um, thin paint, a thin mixture. And all I did was put the, the painting on the ground, on my chair, and then I sprinkled, just flicked some white stars at it. It sounds a bit naughty, but that's what I did. Um, and then at the bottom, as before, you can have your, your trees. And these are, I saw these things in France against um, this background of, of cypress trees and yew hedges and things. So that's... We've had a question, Susie, about the type of paint you're using. So is it acrylic paint that you're yeah. putting down? It is. It's called golden acrylic, which is quite a fluid mixture of acrylic. Um, but I've, I've thinned it down again with some water. Um, but it's, yeah, it's all acrylic. Could you also work with watercolours? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And watercolours are very... Um, forgiving medium, I find, because you can remove it. With acrylic, once it's on, it's difficult to actually um, remove the paint. You can paint over it, but you can't um, take it off. But with watercolour, you just add some water and brush it a bit, and it comes off and blot it. Um, so it's, it's a nice medium. Uh, but the, the other kind of medium I was thinking we could try is charcoal i think people have got some charcoal um Susie, i'm just going along with you and i'm a bit slower than you i wonder if we could just do one more in the same way we did the first one before the charcoal sure the the the, the same motif just with this just going through from doing the ground from the start because we don't have because i don't have a prepped ground already of course yes of course yes definitely okay um, so these were three grounds. I'll do an, a fresh one, but these were three tones of ground in charcoal because I thought people might like to decide um, what hour of night they want to paint in. This is kind of evening and then it's darker and then it's kind of deep night um, in the third one. But I'll, I'll do it afresh, okay? So. Um, that's about half the paper. What I'm doing, I've just got a, a, th a thickish stick of charcoal, but it doesn't matter what, what sort of side you've got. It's um, just a question of putting it on fairly evenly, but I'll even it out with kitchen roll once I've got it on. Right, so my kitchen roll to hand. I'm going to make a nice sort of smoky, even dark 
surface. And then um, with this one, maybe we'll leave the acrylic for, for a bit. We could, um, using the same motif, um, I'll do an acrylic moon, yeah? But then I'm gonna use some ink, black ink. And um, I'm gonna make my trees in, in nice dense black, which sort of shows up very well against the the charcoal and you get a sort of a nice contrast in surface between the, the dry material of the charcoal and the sort of almost glossy wet material of, of, of the ink. And you if can you kind of have ink, Susie, could you use sort of black acrylic paint there? Well, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm just going to switch the camera to see how uh, Louis is getting on here in the office. Yeah, I'm using uh, paint on mine and it, yeah, it's coming up really nice. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean ink, ink paint. I think what I, why I said ink was simply to show um, a mixture of mediums, you know, so you can mix up paint, ink, charcoal, pastel, whatever. Um, and then Maybe just a few stars this time. I saw this in the summer too. I saw a big Jupiter, 11 times the size of Earth apparently, and a fairly big Saturn, which is, I don't remember how many times the size of Earth is. Um, I've got it written down actually. Yeah, he's, Saturn is nine times the size of Earth. Oh my word. Um, we've just had a question, Susie, about um, your work. So um, could you, obviously you are a, a sort of a, a full-time artist, so maybe you could just talk more about the work that you do um, and where people might be able to see your work. Okay, um, well, I, I'm represented, I, I, my studio's in East London, near my home, and I'm represented by Paul Stolper Gallery in the West End in Museum Street. And the sort of work I do tends to be focused on figures, often single figures, um, in, in wildernesses or in rather challenging um, testing situations. Um, and I recently did a whole series on COVID patient, patients and doctors um, in COVID wards. Um, and these were obviously about the pandemic, but they were also linked to earlier work of mine, which is to do with a mysterious type of figure who has a, a mask or a veil or a hood or a visor on him or her. Um, and I've done a series of astronauts in space and polar explorers in the Arctic with these hooded um, garments and costumes. Uh, and I think my work is quite ambivalent. It's to do with joy and suffering. It's to do with testing situations, but also exhilaration and an attempt at, at radiance through the presence of bright light and um, quite rich color. And, you know, like life, it's to do with things being mixed up. They're to do with pleasure and, and pain. Um, but I think both the urban wilderness, the impersonal supermarket or shopping mall, and the natural wilderness, these are very much my area of um, inspiration, I suppose. Does that make sense? It makes total sense and really nice with these works as well because you've got the dark silhouettes of the trees but then also these incredibly bright um stars kind of mm. awe-inspiring stars mm. Mm. yeah um so these this is just a few stars obviously but i mean you can go to town and and, you, and have as many as you like and um you can scatter the, 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 
the sky with stars. Um, and another thing I thought is that some people making a card might like to do a card of their own star sign, their own constellation, whether or not you're into astrology and, and not really, but it's quite nice to know the shape of the constellation that, um, that you are. So, I mean, you could send a card with your own sign on it. I'm, I'm Leo, so mine is something like, uh, what was something like that. Um, and then if I was sending it a card, for instance, to my husband, who's Libra, um, he is something like that. And it's just a it's just a little thought when you're maybe making your present or your card, and then you can maybe put some some trees, branches. This is a new sort of tree, not the conifers. Okay, so you can do all kinds of things with your tree shapes. Um, you can add leaves, you can add vegetation down here, or whatever feels right. You know, just try lots of things out um, at whatever size. It doesn't have to be as big as this, obviously. So that's my Libra card. Peter. <laughs> Here's my Leo card um, for my so We've just had um, a question, um, Susie, just to repeat the name of the website where you can find out about the planets and constellations. Sure. It's called Star Walk. As in to go for a walk in the park. Star Walk 2, I think it's, yeah, it's called Star Walk 2. Um, and there's also, I want to tell you about this nice book. Um, it's published in association with the Royal Observatory Greenwich. And it's, it's a beginner's guide to astronomy. And I'm certainly a beginner. I only got into this recently. <laughs> So um, that's, that's very helpful, not very expensive, $9.99. Oh. I'm just, um, to anyone who's emailed, um, who's messaged about the link to the website, I'm just gonna drop that into, the, into people's Q&A. So um, just bear with me. What, your website or my website? Yeah, the, um, the Star Walk um, website. Oh, sure, oh, sure. yeah. yeah. That's okay, Susie, you can go. Okay, so <laughs> this is some, um, this started off as a, as a Leo card, but um, you've got the idea. Uh, I'm now going to do something with it, something else with it. I'm going to make a biggish moon, like the moon that Louis made. And I'm going to make uh, the man in the moon texture on it with my kitchen roll, like that. And then I'm going to do my wintry tree. As I said, this time of year is great for seeing these silhouettes of wintry branches and vegetation against the night sky. I wish it were clear tonight, but in London it's very murky. So there's that sort of thing you can do. That's another idea. Um, and then moving on, just to give you some ideas, it's obviously not necessary to do it all now, but these are just thoughts for for later, we can get into doing this sort of painting. Um, 
I was thinking I'd do a, um, a one of a meteor shower. The, um, what are they called? Geminids, which are, which are coming our way any time now. If you're in the countryside or somewhere clear, you can um, see them. So not very difficult to paint or draw, but they seem to come from one direction. Well, not always, but pictures I've seen, they seem to come from one direction. So what? you get the needles of light. What are you using there, Susie? Is that chalk? Oh, sorry, I didn't tell you. It's a pastel. Yep. I've got the selection. I've got my Miles pastel, orangey, apricotty, and I've got a white pastel for moon, stars, whatever. And um, I've got charcoal and paint. We've, we've had another question, Susie, about what colour blues you're using for the bluey backgrounds. Right. Pain, this is the Golden Pains Spray, which is a very bluey paint spray. Some paint sprays are more black, um, but you can mix your own with black and ultramarine if you have those two colours. You don't have to buy paint spray. Um, and this one has more ultramarine than others, but you can use a, a mixture of black and ultramarine. Or... Um, you could use, I haven't used it today, but you could use indigo, I've got that, which is a nice rich sort of royal blue. You, know, you don't have to be that naturalistic. My favourite quote that I said in the dog um, class was um, Matisse saying that you can exaggerate in the direction of truth. You can, you're, you're being truthful and real and realistic, but you can also you're making a painting, which is a thing in itself, and you can exaggerate, make, make the moon bigger, you make the blue bluer, whatever. So um, you don't have to stick to the dark blue sky, but I've, I have stuck to it fairly closely. So um, this is my meteor shower, and I might, to ring the changes, I might do an urban landscape for a change. Right, so we're going to have a block of flats. Imagine something in East London near me. Or even looking south to Canary Wharf. And then you might not see a meteor shower so clearly over London because of light pollution. But um, you can exaggerate in the direction of truth. <laughs> so you can have your lights from the sky and then lights from the flats. And you might want to have, as you can see, I'm using my fingers. I, I mean, I use anything to make a mark, the end of a brush, fingers, rag, um, and then of course, paintbrush. Um, and you might want to have a colour in the blocks of flats. I didn't, I didn't suggest getting some yellow in, but I've got some here. So, for example, you could get, get some yellow in here with yellow lights. It's blurred out because it's wet, but that's all right because lights are quite blurry. So this with, with your meteor shower or with stars and moon or you could um Susie we've had a request um to see if you could show how you did the tree again the sort of the silhouette of the tree like on the Libra card oh yes it was at the branches not the conifers I think I think it was the um maybe the person who asked can um say exactly but it was I, I think was it the one where it was kind of it was just the very sort of almost the bare silhouette of oh, the tree yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, thanks. I, I did it fairly um, fairly spontaneously, um, and obviously you could use a um, a photograph to, to refer to the branches with. Um, but I was just doing it from memory, and um, I'll I'll do one again. I mean, I I do work quite quickly, as you can see, and then lots of times things 
things don't feel right and I throw them away or do it again or whatever. Um, but I work in this quite sort of um, calligraphic way with, with marks and um, here's a waning moon, okay? And so I've got my fluid paint and I just, I just made these skeletal branches that you get and I crossed the moon with them, quite a thin brush and quite, um, as I say, quite liquid paint. I don't, want, I don't want the brush to get bogged down in thick paint. So if you were using acrylic paint there, Susie, would you, you'd kind of mix it in with a bit of water just so that the brush is really loaded with the paint and it can move very quickly across That's the right. paint? That's what I am using. I've got this, this mixture here, which is, you can see quite, quite fluid. Quite, um, so, um, that's, that's how I did the tree. I mean, it's, it's not terribly um, accurate, but it's based on the drawings that I've, that I've done before um, of trees. So we're moving into the last kind of five, 10 minutes of the session. So I wonder if anyone's got any questions about any of the techniques that Susie has shown, um, or they'd like to kind of see a bit more of, if you just pop them in the Q&A. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to show what, uh, so we've got Louis, who's been making, oh, that's your meteor shower. Well, I like uh, the meteor shower. I, that's, uh, that's very beautiful. I like your um, Geminids. <laughs> um, and I'll just go over to Murphy as well, who's been. Oh, nice. Uh, that's really very good. It's very expressive. It looks quite um, apocalyptic. Well, they both do actually. The block of flats looks fairly apocalyptic or post apocalyptic. Yeah. <laughs> post Brexit. Um, I forgot, by the way, I know, I know we're running out of time, but I forgot the comet, okay? That's just, just another idea. So we've we've had a few we've had a few requests. So one is what you're doing through your shower. Oh, oh, Susie, Susie, I think you just broke up there a bit. Are you speaking? What was it, Natalie? Oh, sorry, you just we lost you. Yeah, we we're here. We're here. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Yeah, sorry, I got it went. What was it? What? Um, what was the request? So we've just, um, so one question is just the white pastel you're using. Is it um, an oil pastel? Uh, 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 I think it's cool. Uh, so sorry, we've just, we've just, you're slightly breaking up. Um, is it a chalk pastel or an oil pastel? Oh. I think we'll bear with us, Susie. I can't hear, Natalie. Oh no. It's I think a, we, not an oil pastel. It's a, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Can you hear yeah. me? Yep. It's not an oil pastel, a dry pastel. Dry pastel. Okay. Yeah, whatever that's called. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and someone's just asked what other materials you use. What in my general painting? Uh, I guess so. I use oil on board um, and then acrylic on canvas or paper. So um, usually, usually acrylic on paper or canvas, but sometimes oil. Um, someone has asked, um, they'd be interested in seeing how you do your simple person pictures. So you yeah. showed us an example, you had a couple of figures. I wanted to do a person, a people. Have I got, have I got time? Just we've about. Got, we've got time, we can run over by a few minutes. So if people have to leave, um, they can, but otherwise we can stay on for another few minutes. Okay, okay. 
Right, I'm uh, going to paint like the wind. <laughs> May not fly. But, um, I'm doing a background. This is a moonlight scene. So the, the sky is quite dark. The ground, like the land, is less dark because the moon is flooding it with light. Um, and then, this, I haven't got time to let this dry, but um, never mind. Some trees and a figure, one of my single figures, or you could have a couple. I'm going to keep him single, or her. And then um, some shadows. I like doing shadows, people in time with moon or sun marking time. Okay, so there's, there's a figure and you could um, put some stars in as, as well if you wanted to. And the fun bit is you can just put in masses of stars and you can make them. So we've just had a question about obviously making these into cards. Yeah. Um, so obviously you're working there on half of the sheet so you yeah. could just fold the sheet and yeah. then it's a, a card. Or I guess you could cut it out and um, put it on another put it on another piece of um, card. I mean, the, the the card, the bit of paper I showed you at the beginning was just A3 folded, or it could be A4, whatever, just folded in half. And then you can obviously tear it by bending it backwards and forwards um, <clears throat> to make it into a smaller card. And then you could obviously um, just cut whatever you want out and glue it, flour and water or glue, make a paste of flour and water and glue it onto another sheet of paper or a kind of, or a card shape to make your card or your present. Um, and this technique that you're showing us, Susie, obviously with the, the ground and then the paint, you could do this on canvas, um, could you as well as doing it on card or paper? Absolutely, yeah, I mean board, uh, I. I use, I think I showed you, I use cardboard um, and paper here, but um, I've, you know, you could do the same thing on, on canvas or wood or whatever. Um, there are so many supports to use. Uh, and uh, canvas just needs, well, you can buy it ready primed, of course, um, uh, or, or, or if not, just prime it with some simple white primer and, and start. And acrylic on canvas is, is, is perfect, marvellous, terrific, you know, it could be great. We've just had a, um, another question. Obviously the last session you did was um, dog life drawing. Yeah. Um, so do you ever, would you ever think about putting animals against this kind of starry night landscape? It's a very good idea, yeah. I mean, you could do um, you could do an owl in the tree. I mean, if this is fairly naturalistic, you could do bats. Again, naturalistic. You could do um, Oh, oh, you just. <laughs> if you have, you could have a dog in here. You have to cover my dirt pot. Oh, can you hear me, Natalie? Yeah, we can hear Natalie? you. Yeah, yeah, we've got, <laughs> we've got you. It's just uh, right at the end, the, the sound is just failing us. But so that's a figure that you're painting. Oh, someone doing stargazing, okay. Oh, nice. This was just a little, a little uh, one to maybe finish on. It was a figure with a telescope at night. Oh, that's lovely. Um, well, I hope um, today, what you know, obviously Susie's shown kind of a whole raft of techniques here. Um, if anyone has any other questions, then you can always drop them through to us at info at hospital-rooms.com. Um, we also would love to see the work that you're making um, and we have our gallery on our website. Um, so what we'll be doing is we'll be sending around a link via Eventbrite with a link to our gallery and if you'd like to upload images to that either anonymously or with your name we'd love to include them um, and just to see how this session has inspired you. Um, we 
Susie, I can't think. I'm just going to switch to your video because I want everyone, I want everyone to see your lovely moon brooch that you showed us before. Oh yeah, yeah. This is from a friend a few Christmases ago. Look at that. I've, I dressed appropriately for the session. Maybe. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much, Susie. For that was so much fun. Really enjoyable. <laughs> I'm just going to show you the one that um, Louis's done next to me because it's so nice. Oh, that is nice. Oh, that is lovely. That's like London skies, that sort of smoky red at night. It's nice, oh. really nice. Um, so thank you so much, Susie, and we've had... Thank so many lovely thanks to everybody. Thanks to everybody for joining in. And I hope it was rather quick, but we got quite a lot done. I hope we got something out of it, some ideas for the future. Yeah, all today, but you know, and we'll look out of the window because, or go outside in the garden because it's beautiful nights for stargazing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and everyone, remember, we um, Susie did another wonderful workshop with us earlier in the term, so we have um, a pre recorded version of that and we have the live zoo session. So that's dog life drawing. So if you pop on our YouTube channel, which is um, just search hospital rooms, you'll be able to find that. Um, we have another workshop, um, sort of festive workshop on the 24th of December, um, and that's also at two o'clock. So please join us for that. That'll be our last one in this year and then we'll be back in January um, with six new sessions so we've we're just programming that moment putting all the final finishing touches to that and we'll be ready to announce that really really soon um, so again thank you so much for joining us um, please keep an eye on your emails because we'd love to see um, your work in our gallery um, and hopefully we will see you again later on this year um, so thanks from everyone here and we'll see you soon bye